What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about a brand new extension from Fredo 6 designed to help you generate curves inside of SketchUp. This extension was voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. One of the perks of being a supporter on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to support the show, um, maybe vote on the extensions that I cover every week, make sure to check that out in the link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first things first, this is a free extension that you can download by going to the Sketchication website and searching for Fredo Spline in the plugins section. Note that when you open up Fredo Spline um, and you go to the More Info tab, you're going to get more info in here about how to install this. One thing that's going to be really important is you need to make sure that you've installed um, version 10.6 or above of Libfredo in order for this to work. And so in addition, there's also a link in here to the main post on it in the discussion forum. And Fredo has posted a bunch of information in here, um, not only about how the extension works, but also to some documentation. So if you get confused about anything that's in here, you can go to this forum post and you can download these documents that walk you through how each one of the tools work. And so when you first install this extension, you're going to get a toolbar that looks something like this. And so basically what this toolbar is, is this contains a number of different tools for the creation and editing um, and making changes to different curves. And so to start making curves, you're going to use this first option right here, um, the button for create curves. And basically the way that's going to work is you're going to click on that and it's going to pop up a little menu like this one. It's got some tools in here that you can set things like uh, how the start and end sequence is created, um, if your curves are created inside or outside of groups, as well as if you can see the vertices in your lines and some other things in here as well. But you can see how when you activate this tool, notice how you get this little icon in here with a little uh, cross on it. And so the cross is going to be where you can click on different things in order to start adding pieces of your curve. So for example, let's say I was to come in here and click a few times. So basically what I'm doing is I'm adding control points for my curve. And so you see how we now have a curve in here. And at the moment it doesn't look very special because it's just a series of polylines. But you can see how if you go up inside of this menu right here, there's actually information about the kind of curve that this is. So right now, it's a simple polyline, meaning that it's just basically a number of connected edges. One thing I do want to note is if you mouse over these and then single click, move your mouse and then click again, you can edit the location of your control points that your curve is based on. So you can see how I can move this and this is going to regenerate this curve based on those control points. So in addition, if you ever want to add um, like edges or points in here, um, you can move your mouse over one of the edges and then just single click and then move your mouse in order to insert a control point. So notice how I'm able to insert control points in here really easily just by clicking somewhere on this edge. And so this is basically, we've set our points and then the edges that are in here are being generated based on our curve type selection. Well, if you go up to this drop down, you can see how there's a number of different curve types in here that you can select. So let's say, for example, that I selected the classic Bezier. Well, what this is going to do is this is going to now regenerate this as that kind of a curve. And so notice how when you select a different kind of curve, you get a certain number of options, right? So what you can do is you can use this in order to adjust the number of vertices that are in here for this object. So um, it's adjustable in the sense that you can adjust the smoothness in here and every kind of curve that's on this list has a different number of options. So if you select the NURBS option, for example, you can adjust the way this is generated by adjusting the tension on the line. In addition, you can also set these to adjust automatically by clicking on these little items right here. And notice how the curves are going to adjust with my control points. So if I make changes to my control points, my curves are going to adjust along with these. So um, what I really like about this is this is truly, um, this is truly non-destructive modeling in the sense that I can come back and edit it again in the future if I need to. So let's say for example that I was to either click off of this line or click this button right here in order to exit the tool. You can see how my curve has been created in here. And by the way, you can set this to lock to an axis if you want this to be 100% flat. Um, I didn't in this case. But in this situation, let's say I wanted to come back and edit this curve. Well, you can do that by selecting your curve, 
and then coming up here and clicking on the button for edit curves. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to make changes to this curve inside of SketchUp. So um, it's not like we've created this curve and then we're kind of stuck with it. We can actually come back and make changes. You can also still adjust the kind of curve that you've created. So you can see how these are still completely usable even though we exited out of this once. So you can use this in order to create a bunch of different kinds of curves inside of SketchUp really quickly. And so one cool thing about this is it's got almost a format painter tool. If you've ever used the format painter inside of like Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Word where you can uh, basically pick the settings from one object and move them over into another. So for example, let's say that I've created another curve over here and I want it to have the same settings as this curve right here. Well, what you can do is you can use this option which is called swap curves. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to select a curve click on this, and then it's gonna ask me to click on a curve, right? So right now, for example, I've got this polyline in here. Well, if I was to mouse over this curve, you see how it says click anywhere to swap the pre-selected curve? What that's gonna do is that's gonna bring in the options from this other curve in here. So what that means is that'll take this and it'll make it so that it matches the settings that were inside of this curve right here. So what that means is that means that you can create a line and then just pull this over and uh, make this curve the same kind of thing that you have over here. So in addition, there's also an option here to convert curves that you've created inside of SketchUp. So let's say for example, I was to do the same kind of thing where I was to draw a number of edges just like this. We could select them and then you can see how this option right here for create curves, if you click on that, you can convert this series of points into a kind of curve. So what that means is that means you can take SketchUp objects and convert them to Fredo spline objects. And so once you've created this and you click, then you can come in here and click on it and edit it. So notice how I was able to convert that object to a curve and now it's an editable um, Fredo spline object that you can use in order to work on these different curves in here. And notice how each one of these First of all, notice how you can come in here and click on that endpoint. So you can extend your lines by clicking on this arrow like this. So notice how what this allows me to do is this allows me to start adding points to this line. And notice how too I can close this. Like notice how this snaps to this control point right here. So you can actually use this to snap to an end in order to create a closed curve like this one. So in addition, there's also a quick launcher tool that you can use in order to adjust the way that this extension is going to look. You can adjust how your toolbar is going to look using this option. So you can see how if you mouse over some of these curves, you can see how you can toggle the visibility of additional icons in the toolbar. So what that means is that means that you can turn other options on and off for different kinds of curves and have them show up in your toolbar so that you don't have to use the drop down in order to edit them. And notice that those will only show up when you restart SketchUp. So if I was to restart SketchUp, and then I was to take another look at this toolbar, you can see how now these additional options are going to show up inside my toolbar. So for example, if you find yourself using the Bezier Classic a whole lot, um, you can just use this to automatically add a Bezier Classic without worrying about the other, um, without worrying about any of the other curve types. So you can use this to add all of these different options to your menu in here really easily. So I, I really like the way that the interface is set up in here. I find it to be very easy to work with, but I'd love to hear what you guys think about this extension. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. It, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.